His grace. Each other up in your most holy faith, 
First thing I want you to know that as believers, we've got to edify and encourage one another. Amen. We are to edify and encourage one another. We are to strengthen each other. We are to shore each other up. We are to hold each other up. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's how we build our faith because uh, where there's two, you know, two is stronger than one. A three-string cord is not easily broken. And what does the word say? Where there's two, when two is better than one, because when one is cold, the other can warm it up. And see, that's what we ought to do for each other. We ought to be warming each other up. We ought to be encouraging one another. We ought to be igniting the fire in one another. Amen. Amen. Unfortunately, sometimes we do just the opposite. We pour water on the fire when we need to be blowing wind on the fire to, to stoke the fire. That's what we're to do. How do we do that? We do that through our sound teaching. Yeah. Right. Amen. That's how we do it. We do that through encouraging one another. We do that through speaking life and not death. Speaking positivity and not negativity. Amen. Amen. Being confident and encouraging instead of critical. We need to do that to one another. Amen. You know, it's not always what you say, it's how you say it. And then sometimes how you say it comes from how it is in your heart. And no matter how you try to cover up what's in your heart, it comes out through your mouth. Amen. 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 So this what he said we ought to do. We ought to edify and encourage each other spiritually. You know, I talk to people a lot of times, and, and my best conversation are those that center around the Word of God. And the person of Jesus Christ in particular. Amen. Amen. People can talk to you about everything. Yeah. People can talk to you about anything. But most conversation, if they don't deal with the scripture, deal with the relationship, deal with our faith, deal with our Father, then it ends up being pointless. And you don't gain anything from it. Amen. And you leave just like you came. But when you talk about the word of God, when you build them up, when you lift them up, when you speak God's truth, yeah, right. there's power in the word of God. Yeah. Amen. 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 So much power. Yeah. Scripture, that's how we do it through scripture. That's why fellowship is good. Fellowship is so good because when we come together as the people of God, he is the focus. Yeah. And when, whenever he is the focus, he said, if I'll be lifted, I'll draw. When he's the focus, he draws us to himself. Amen. When I'm the focus, that does nothing for anybody. But when he's the focus, it lifts us and it strengthens us and it encourages us and it builds up our faith. Amen. 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 That's what we ought to do. And that's what's important that we spend how else can we do that? Not only through encouraging words, but then Bible words. Yeah. Scripture. Yeah. It's one thing to say you're going to be alright, but it's something else to tell them how they're going to be alright. Yeah. And why they're going to be alright. Yeah. And why they are alright already. Yeah. Yeah. And that's through the promises of God's word. When you know God's word, you can stand through the trials and the storms of life because when you can't see, you still can. He will bring it up in your memory by the Holy Spirit. And if you just rest on His Word, when you're going through something, this is what I want to tell you. When you're going through something, stop focusing on what you're going through. Focus on what He's told you. And keep rehearsing what God has said. And when you rehearse what God has said, it'll do something in your heart. Amen. See, it won't always change your situation, but it'll change you in your situation. Do you ever wonder why somebody can have joy when they're going through trials and trouble? That's because the joy of the Lord is their strength. That's because they are resting in Him. They're trusting in Him. They are holding on to His word. They're believing in what He says. And though the storms keep raging, you can ride the storm because you're standing on a solid foundation. And you have an anchor for your soul. Keep on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He said, My soul is 
pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. I just wonder how much do we think about the Holy Spirit? I know Jesus is Lord and He is Savior, but the Holy Spirit is our comfort and our God. Oh, yes. He is our power. Yes. Amen. He is present with us. He, yes. he aids us. Yes. He aids us. Don't you know? That he aids us in prayer? Yeah. Don't you know it's the Holy Spirit that aids us in understanding God's word? Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit. You listen, it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And it says, pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is for the body of Christ. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is for those that know Jesus. Yeah. Those that accepted him as the partner of their sin. Those that, that have trusted in the forgiveness that he offers. Yeah. Those are the ones that are have to have the precious power of the Holy Spirit in their lives and we need to walk in it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's yeah. pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. It don't mean pray so get so emotional in your prayer that you lose control and you think that's the Holy Spirit. No, it's a seek the Holy Spirit's guidance. See, when you begin your prayer, you need to understand you don't start from your own mind. You try to start from the mind of God. You say, you invite the Holy Spirit to lead you because He knows what you need to pray. He knows what you need better than you do. He knows where you need to go in your talk with God. Amen. And He's there for you. So when you pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, you seek the Holy Spirit's guidance in your prayer. See, if I don't seek the Holy Spirit's guidance, then I'm praying in my own. Yes. Amen. 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 And so you know what? Look at a lot of prayers answered. You're not praying in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because God is not going to lead you in prayer to a place of defeat. Amen. Amen. He's not going to lead you to pray for something that he's got to deny. The reason we can deny it so much is that we're not being led by the Spirit. He knows. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, prayer can't be routine. You know, we wake up, thank you, Lord, give another day. Is that the extent of your prayer? Is that how far it goes? That is just your flesh. Do you really recognize that God has given you another day? That God wants you to walk in his uh, purpose for you? God wants you to walk in victory? That's where he wants you. God wants you to walk above and not beneath. He wants you to walk in victory. I mean, you, we don't need to always be stumbling over our own feet. See, the reason we stumble over our feet and our path is because we're not walking the path that he's prepared for us. So in prayer, we've got to ask the Holy Spirit to guide us even in our prayer. We acknowledge him as we're talking. And when he begins to move in our heart, we begin to pray for things we didn't even think about. That's what I happened. Am I just reading her business? Am I the only one? Oh, my brothers and sisters, he gives insight and discernment. When you start praying in the spirit, then God will bring names to you that you didn't even think about. And you begin to pray for things you had no idea you needed to be praying for. Amen. And when you walk with God, you'll find out through the course of time that when God spoke to your heart, We don't have the guidance. We need to be spirit led. If we're going to be affected, we got to be spirit led. Amen. Yes. See, I know we're smart, and that's the problem. Sometimes we're too smart. Amen. You remember when your pastor said, You're too smart for your own good. Amen. Because we just mess it up, but we think we know it, right? Yeah. That's how it is. When we think we all that and know it, then we don't see God. We think we know what to do, how to do, what to say, where to go. And then it's normally wrong. Amen. Amen. But it's more effective when they're spirit led. Because when they're spirit led, guess what? It aligns with God's will. Amen. Now don't you know that the Holy Spirit is not going to lead you?
you to pray for something contrary to God's will. They're in perfect unity. Holy Spirit not going to tell you to go left when the word tells you to go right. I'm listening to the Spirit. He said, go left. What did the word say? What does the book say? You know how you can win more arguments? It's kind of what the book says. What does the book say? That is it. No, it, it, it don't matter what I think, how I feel, if it's not what the book says, the book wins. And you Every time. So when we pray the power of the Holy Spirit, we allow the God's purpose. We're walking in God's way. Yeah. We're listening to God's voice. And don't you know, we just miss it because we think that the only time His Spirit, His God, His praise, and His worship is when we gather in here. But don't you know that who you are in here is the same person you are on your job? Amen. The same person you are in your stores? Amen. That's the same. You're, the same. You're that person. Oh, yes. Amen. You don't change. You know, you don't put on a different coat. I mean, you might put on a different coat. The same person here. Amen. Amen. Right? If you're a child of God on fire for God, shouting and praising and worshiping here, then that should be that like, you can't leave out of here and go to the store and be uh, the, the uh, grouse that stole Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know that every now I just said that out of my head. That's how it is. The Holy Spirit is like the wind in our prayer lives. It guides us. Amen. As the wind guides the ship, or, 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 or the wind guides the sailboat. That's how, how the Spirit guides us in our prayer and in our lives. Amen. 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 You ought to be a witness in here, you ought to be a witness out there. You ought to be a witness everywhere. Amen. 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 So we got to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what he says. Verse 21. He says, Await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will bring you eternal life. Yes. Await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. In this way, you will keep yourself safe in God's love. Await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you need to live with hope in Christ's mercy. Yeah. Are you living with hope? Amen. Yes. We're living in hope in Christ's yes. mercy. He's the only one that can give the mercy that we need. Amen. And we got to hope for that. We got to believe that. We got to expect that. We got to expect God's mercy in our life. We got to expect God's grace in our life. We live in that way, expecting God's grace in our life. Expecting His mercy in our life. We live in anticipation and expectation. Amen. When we live like that, then we will stay focused. We will be grounded in the truth. We will be able to stay in the trials of life. Because we don't get lost in the trial. Because we're looking and we're expecting the hope of God. We need to live expecting God to get us out. We need to live with the mindset, get me out, Jesus. We need to live knowing that if you don't get me out now, he's going to get me out. Oh, man. 
want to do right. I, we, we, we should never not want to do right. Now, I'm not giving you a bye. Now, so you, can just, uh, you should never not want to do right. You should always want to do right. But if I can get one witness, not to all, my it's Paul. Paul said, when I would do good, evil is ever before. He said, I'm bound and I wrestle because the things I know that I should do and those are the things I don't do and the very things I despise, those are the things that I do. Paul is not giving us an excuse, but he's letting us know that we all struggle. Amen. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I want God's mercy in my struggle. Yeah. Don't you? Don't you want God to be merciful? Don't you want God to give me grace? Don't you want God to love you in hell? And I'm going to tell you something. He'll do that and more. Yeah. But then, he says right here, uh -huh. show mercy. Show you want mercy? Show mercy. Show mercy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Too many Christians. Merciful to them, and that's what the good shepherd has done for us. 
Amen. Amen. So that's what we ought to do. When we offer mercy and show mercy, we help them recover. We help them to get strengthened. And we help them to line back up to where they should be. We all have a responsibility in that. And last thing, I'm going to let you go. He said in verse 23, he said, rescue others by snatching them. Now, snatching is not a mild thing. That's true. You know, when a, a, a kid is running across the road and you see a car coming and you snatch him back. You snatch him back. You don't care if you rip it from or a sock it or nothing. You don't think about that because you'd rather get that own place back in the socket than to be saying, uh, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Amen. 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 So you rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. That means you come, sometimes you gotta get physical. Oh, we start fighting right now. I mean, you gotta put both of them in the center. And, 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 and then you have to uh, not just Gather along, you gotta be in a haste. Yeah. You know, I, I remember, and that I probably could have prevented an accident because when uh, Reverend uh, Parkinson was uh, pastor in Somerville and, and I was doing his revivals, and one night uh, we were going and I was riding with him. And uh, we was riding along talking, and, and I saw this car that was turning left in front of him and and he was not slowing down. And this is what I said. I, I said, Rev, I think that car is turning left. That's how I said it. And by the time he said what, he hit the car. We spun around, window my my old window broke. Y'all remember that night y'all saw me pain and I had glass all in my hair and everything. And uh, so we spun around, and nobody got seriously injured. But after that, he said, why didn't you warn me? I did. I said, Reverend, I think that the is coming. <laughs> now, if I have said, Reverend, that car is coming, he'll probably check it, right? right, right. And what I'm saying is sometimes you got to snap. What I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I remember that night as if it was yesterday. We were spinning around. We ended up in this uh, parking lot, an uh, uh, old store, and all the you know, passengers just a wonder we didn't just get, you know, not get hit. And Reverend Frank Johnson, the pastor of Pine Grove, he was coming by. He saw me. He saw us sitting there. He stopped, put me on the van with him. We went on to Somerville. And uh, I went on, and uh, I think the rest of them came back home. I preached that night. And, uh, yeah, I think my mom, you showed up, because she brought me back home and, uh, and passed all in my hair and everything. Of course, uh, that's how that happened. But the fact is, I could have probably changed that mm -hmm. if I would have been more expedient yeah. in my expression of my situation. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But you gotta rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Sometimes you gotta let them know how serious it is. Amen. Sometimes you gotta let them know how serious it is. Amen. Then he said, show mercy to steal others, but do so with great caution. Yeah. Hating the sins that contaminate their lives. Then what Jude would have us understand as followers of Christ, if we're going to be faithful and continue this path in the right way. Yes, we have to confront sin. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But you've got to confront sin with mercy yeah. and discernment. Yeah. Amen. 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 You can confront it, but you must do it with mercy yeah. and discernment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you'll be wise but you'll be bold when you address sin in others. Oh, yeah. You should be bold because some things call for boldness. Amen. Some things call for that, but then you got to be wise yeah. as well oh, in dealing and addressing sin in others. Yeah. And you must understand that when we do that, 
We are rescuing those that's headed towards destruction. But we know that when we are rescuing them, we must do it with care. You got to be careful how you deal with one another. You got to be careful how you deal with others. You got to be wise. And I tell people, listen, you don't use the word as a weapon. You don't weaponize it to demoralize people. But you use it as a bridge to help somebody cross over to where they need to be. You use it to warn them of common destruction. You got to let them know the danger of their sin. But you got to be careful because you got to be merciful. Because you got to be careful that you don't fall victim to the same sin. You got to understand how dangerous sin is. But you got to realize how good God is. We as children of God need to be ready, willing, and able to reach out to somebody that's going the wrong way. We got to be ready, willing, and able to help them come out of the situation. But we got to do it, yes, with the mercy and grace. And when you rescue somebody, not only does heaven rejoice, but the body of Christ is built up in faith. And when you rescue somebody, what you've done is save somebody from the judgment of hell. And if you have the love of God in your heart,
those are trial rivers and the uh, storms of life. Yes, yes. May we all hold on to God's words yes. and trust in God's ability to move in our lives.